see we're doing things a little bit differently this morning due to the uh, cold snap this past week and we had the uh, ice storm and all of that and so but we're adjusting so if you'll help us with our adjustments and one way you can do that is by joining you, we're not the choir's not singing the call to worship uh, solo but they're going to join you so let's stand and sing it together glorify thy name and we'll do all three verses and Cindy will lead us the choirs usually up here and they don't have an opportunity to, to greet you so we're playing shooting from the hip this morning Tyler play it again and you greet and welcome all of those around you and thank them for coming and the choir will be able to welcome you this morning Most everyone is in order, and so if you remain standing, and we'll sing about the solid rock as Cindy leads us again.
you may be seated. As always, it's my privilege to welcome you and to thank you for being here. We have those who visit with us and we're delighted and honored by your presence and trust that the day will be a meaningful one indeed. By way of announcement, let me remind you that uh, this evening at five o'clock, is it five o'clock? Yeah, five o'clock. We're having the blast off or the uh, polar blast for our Bible school, which you see decorated so graciously here this morning. And that's for everyone. It's a cookout and uh, we'll come together and have a good time and fellowship and registration and then there'll just be a brief devotional for everyone and you'll be able to go home and then Monday and Tuesday nights we'll be back for the sessions of the Bible School, which is a little different this year, but we hope it will be meaningful for you. As you notice the theme, you put it up, Lisa, what does it say on here? Polar Blast. Polar Blast. Now, I don't know how they come up with these things, and I was told that I should really wear something to promote it, but I didn't have a necktie that would fit it, and so uh, <laughs> I created one to uh, let you know what we're going to be doing uh, this coming week, and uh, we're going to have a good time, aren't we? And it's for everyone, for everyone. You say old folks too, I mean adults and the children and everyone in between. Now this is for the adults. I need to make this announcement. We have Monday night and Tuesday night for the adult session. Because we don't have but two nights, we're gonna do something differently. Will it come on up here and we'll do this right now and then you can lead the prayer for us. This is my older brother, Willard. <laughs> now, I've read in the paper, I heard somewhere, you're going to retire. Are you already retired? No, I'm just trying it today. See how, <laughs> See how you like it? Yeah, right. Okay, all right, that's fine. But let me tell you what we're going to do on Tuesday night. I've talked to Willard about this ahead of time. He's been in the ministry for how many years? Four to six. Four to six. That's good. <laughs> These youngsters, you have to tell them everything. But anyway, but four to six years. Willard's going to tell us about that 46-year journey. It's all been, uh, what is it, uh, roses and peaches, right? Not our land. <laughs> Not our land. But he's going to tell us the story of he and Marin for during that time, serving the Lord. On Tuesday night, I'm going to tell my story, our story. Now, mine's a little longer because I've been at it for 65 years. And you'll hear that whole story from the two of us. Let me see, uh, 46 and 65. How many is that, Rusty? I don't have my calculator. <laughs> 111 is what I can <laughs> All right, but that's our plan. I think it's going to be what we've never done this. We've never done this before. I have no idea what he's going to say, and he doesn't have any idea what I'm going to say. In fact, there's another gist to it. I don't have any idea what I'm going to say either. Until, <laughs> but we're going to have a good time telling the story. And some of you will be tied up with the children in the classes, but if you're not involved in that, you, it, will be, it will be meaningful for you. So, Willard, you have announced your retirement at... Uh, I have. And when is it going to be? December 31, 218. 218, December. Seven months. Huh? Seven months. Oh, seven months to go. Now, it's... Uh, uh, oh, six now, I guess. Six months, yeah. Is Marion going to retire at the same time? She's already there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really asked Willard to come up here and lead our prayer this morning, and this was just attached to it because uh, uh, he's up here. <laughs> I've had the question before, before I pray, I've had the question sometimes, have you ever thought about retiring? I say, yeah, right after the business meetings. <laughs> <laughs> Father, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you for this time together with your people. 
We pray that each one of us will truly have an experience when we truly worship you and have a genuine experience with you this morning. Bless each one here. Bless Don as he shares and the music and all of that. Just bless it and use it for your glory. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Now, we jumped over the birthdays and that part. Birthdays over here this month or this week or sometime. In the balcony, anyone? Not a Sanders birth? Where do, who is it? Yes. Brenda? Whose is it, Brenda? Yours? Huh? Are you 21 yet, Brenda? <laughs> Almost. Two more days. Two more days. Anyone in the uh, upstairs? Reggie, you don't have a birthday. We're having an anniversary, and I'm celebrating. <laughs> Your wife was ashamed to come with you. Is that the way it is, Rest? Oh, good golly. How many years y'all been married, Reggie? 39 long and glorious years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any birthdays down here? Any birthdays anywhere else? Anniversaries. I, I see five hands. Where? Gloria. Uh, Anita's birthday will be tomorrow. Tomorrow. Not here today. Not here. She's on the road. So I, I saw other hands in it. Where are the other hands? Okay. Yeah, Lorna. Oh, 29. 29 what? 16 years. And Steve's going to be alone. <laughs> 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 any others? Any other? Uh, Rella. Dick and I have an anniversary tomorrow. Dick, how many years? 57. 57 <laughs> years. <for> a, <laughs> <laughs> any others? Any others? Tyler, it's up to you. continue our service by singing a great old hymn. Someone has referred to it as the T and O Railroad, which we all need to travel. Trust and obey. obey. Let's stand and sing it as our offertory hymn.
as we share in giving this morning, Tracy will lead us in our prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another beautiful Lord's Day and for this time that we can come into your house and to sing your praises and study your word. And Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you continue to bestow upon this church. And Lord, we thank you for this time with the service where we have an opportunity to give back a small portion of all that you have allowed us to have. And Lord, we ask that you bless the gift and the giver. And we ask that you take these tithes and offerings, multiply them and use them for the betterment of thy kingdom. These things we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. That does not include the choir. As you see, they are prearranged or uh, somehow are arranged uh, because of our decorations this morning. But they're going to sing for you a hymn which you know and love and have heard. But may it be a blessing to hearts today. Leaning on the everlasting arm.
else was on the paper? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kwai. He didn't have any paper. All right. Our scripture this morning is taken from the Gospel of John. I'm going to break in at verse 19, and I'll read through verse 29. Now this is the testimony of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? that we may give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I'm the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now those who were sent were from the Pharisees, and they asked him, saying, When did you baptize if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stands one among you whom you do not know. It is he who coming after me is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to loose. These things were done in Bethbara, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. These words as we find them in John's Gospel, beginning there in chapter 1. It's been my pleasure across the years to be able to hear many, many of the well-known preachers of our day. I've been in services on several different occasions when Billy Graham was the preacher, and my number one preacher out of the whole crowd was Dr. Stephen Olford, who for years, he's from Scotland, was from Scotland, was the pastor of the Calvary Baptist Church in New York City where Dick Volker attended when he was, had the privilege of living in that city for a while. I've heard Dr. W.A. Criswell, who was pastor of the First Baptist Church in Dallas for 50 years. Dr. R.G. Lee, who was known for one sermon more than any other that he ever preached, and that was the sermon Payday Someday. And he preached it literally hundreds of times all over this country. I knew Charles Stanley personally, was with him in college, knew him as a young preacher. In fact, he's preached in every church that I've ever served except Cobham Park Baptist Church. And then he got too old to come to Warsaw and so. But one of my favorite preachers, one of my favorite preachers is one by the name of Dr. Vance Havner. Now you must let me tell you a little bit about the man. I mean, he looks like he's 125 years old in the picture. And he looked that way his whole life, to be perfectly honest. But he grew up in the hills of North Carolina and he started preaching when he was 12 years old. In fact, he couldn't even see over the pulpit, and so they had to get him a box and put it behind the pulpit so they could see his face over the pulpit. But he was a great preacher. I loved, I've heard him, I don't know how many times, he used to come to the North Carolina conferences for years and preach to us there. He never raised his voice in the pulpit. He read every word that he ever preached in his sermon. But that man had something to say. And I have a collection of about 15 or 20 of his books at home that have been such a blessing to me. Now I tell you all of that because of one story that I remember him telling. He said there were these two river boats that were passing on the Mississippi River. And a man on one of the boats who was a worker turned to a fellow beside him and said, Look, there's the captain of that other boat. He said, I know him. He said, uh, One time I fell off of my boat and I would have drowned. But that man, the captain of that other boat, 
He rescued me. This is his punchline. And he said, I love to point him out. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, my friend. I want you to talk, I want to talk to you about pointing out Jesus to others. And I'm not talking about just standing in the pulpit and pointing a finger and things like that. But the different ways that we have in our lives, no matter who we may be, to point out Jesus. John the Baptist did that, you remember? And we have the stories about him as the uh, uh, one who pointed out others to Jesus. The Bible, uh, John, he was the original one, Captain Pointer, who pointed out Jesus. You remember that he began to preach before Jesus did. In fact, many of the people thought John was the promised Messiah. And John said, no, I'm not the Messiah. I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness, telling others about him, that he may come and save from our sins. And in that, John was pointing out and reminding others of the blessing of the promised Messiah. He said, this is my opportunity, this is my privilege to point out Jesus to other people that they may know him. You will recall that John was the one who was responsible, in fact, who baptized Jesus in the Jordan River when Jesus came and requested baptism at, in the Jordan. And uh, John said, I'm not worthy to baptize you. But Jesus requested John's baptism. And it was J John, the baptizer, who baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. We don't know exactly where that was, but we think we know where it was because it was down at the southern part of the Jordan River just before it enters into the Dead Sea. And it's the wisest, I mean, the widest part of the Jordan at that point. And I point out to you, because there are some people in this room this morning who were baptized at that very same site not too long ago in the water that was 50, uh, the 46 degrees on the day that we were there. So the baptism service didn't last long uh, that day. But anyway, we find that John was one who had the opportunity, the privilege, the honor of pointing out Jesus to others. It all began, you remember, many, many years before that, when God began his rescue mission of rescuing those uh, who needed to be saved from their sins, and how that God spoke to those in the, even way back as far as the Garden of Eden, and reminded them that they were to be the ones uh, who were to spread the good news. And then we got to the time in when Jesus was recognized, and when John pointed to him and says, there is the one who is the Savior who has come to save the world. And his mission, the mission of Jesus, as you recall, was indeed a mission to seek and to save those who were lost. But that wasn't his only part of his mission here on this earth. For he came not just to seek and to save the lost, but according to the Bible, he also came that we might have life, and not just life, but life more abundantly. And that was, a John, that was John telling us more about this. But in order for that abundant life uh, to be ours, then we must turn to him in salvation and look to him for the truth that he has in store for us and what's he, what he has done in our lives. For you see, we too have fallen off the ship as the captain, as the man pointed out. We came to that point where we were alienated from God, where we needed to be rescued from our sin as well. And the problem is that many fail to realize that I need this salvation. 
of which John the Baptist spoke and when he pointed to and called out Jesus. And so the need of the hour across this land of ours today, the need of the hour is for those who know not our Lord to be rescued from their sins. And the good news about it, as the artists have depicted for us, the good news about it is that Jesus is in the rescue business. And he's there to welcome the lost as we return to him and turn our hearts back to him. I've already told you how it all began there in Eden's paradise when man sinned against God and rebelled against him and how that God needed to be rescued, to be saved from his sins and how in due time John pointed to Jesus and said, look, there he is. Jesus, the Son of God, who has come to save us from our sins. And in that process, he's been doing that from the days of the New Testament to seek and to save the lost and to draw us unto himself that we might have life. And as the scriptures say, we might not just have life, but to have it more abundantly is what he wants us to enjoy to, once we come to know him. But in order for that to happen, in order for that to happen, we must by faith turn to him, receive him into our hearts by faith, and to be one of his children and to follow where he would lead us. But you see, that's not, that's not the end of the story. And this is where you and I come into the picture, perhaps most of us, if not all of us here this morning. For you see, the rest of the story is that you and I are in, face the challenge of pointing out the captain to others, however that may be. You say, preacher, I can't preach. You don't have to be able to preach. There are some of us who preach that don't know we can't preach either, but we keep doing it. And so, it's our opportunity to say, look, I'd like to tell you about Jesus. I go to that Cobham Park Church or that Welcome Grove Church or wherever it may be, and I'd like for you to be my guest and to come and hear my preacher talk about the Savior. There are many ways of being able to point out the captain to others along the way. But in order for that to happen, there is a threefold responsibility. And the first of those three folds is that we ourselves individually, personally, believe in, receive, and confess Jesus as the Lord and Savior of our lives. This is where it begins. It's not just in coming and sitting on a church pew it's not just in giving a little money once in a while. It's not just in being nice to a neighbor or something like that. But as pointed out, to believe that this Jesus is indeed the Son of God, we receive him into our hearts by faith, and then we confess him as the Lord of life publicly before others, and then at the proper time we verify all of that by following him through the waters of baptism. That is our responsibility, to help point out the captain, believing in him, receiving him into our hearts, and confessing him as Lord of life. And then daily, have the opportunity of confessing Jesus to others. And it can be ever so simple. It can be inviting that neighbor. It can be reaching out to that clerk at the grocery store. We're having this at our church this week, or come hear my preacher, and if you don't want to hear him, go up and hear the other boy in Newland. But I want you to come and be aware of the good news that's being shared in the Word of God. And then to point out the Savior to others, to remind them that there is one who can make a difference in their lives. There is one who has come to save us from our sins. There is one who wants to be a part of our lives in a very, very personal way by serving and living for 
and doing his will. All of which leaves us this morning, here on this last Sunday in the month of June, which leaves us this morning with a twofold challenge as we meet in this church house on this Sunday morning. And the twofold challenge is this. Number one, to openly declare our faith in Jesus and trust him as Savior and Lord of life. And I don't know, I, I think I know just about everyone here, but there may be someone who's never done this. You've never said, Jesus, I want you to come into my heart. Or maybe you've asked him to come into your heart, but you've never publicly confessed him. You've never followed him in obedience through the baptismal waters. And so the challenge is ours to declare our faith and trust in Jesus as Savior and Lord and not to be ashamed of it. And then there's the second part of that challenge, and that is to point out the Savior in every way possible. I mentioned some very simple ways, a simple invitation to come to church, a simple invitation to join, ask someone to join you in doing this or doing that or sharing with them in conversation in your home or wherever you may be to let them know that you believe in Jesus, that he's a part of your life and you want him to be a part of their lives as well. And once again, I can wrap it all up by saying and pointing out to you that Jesus is the one who welcomes all who will come to him. As he has reminded us in so many different ways, he doesn't care who we are. He doesn't care what we've done. He doesn't care how far we've drifted. He doesn't care how good we may think we are. He's just willing to welcome us when we're willing to open our hearts and receive him as Lord and Christ and Savior of all. The man on the river boat had it right. He preached a great sermon that day when he turned to his buddy beside him and said, you see that captain over there? He said, I love to point him out because he rescued me one day when I fell off my boat and I just love, I just love to point him out to others. And my challenge to you as I challenge myself is that in these days to come that we'll use the opportunity to let others know that we belong to the Lord ourselves and we are a part of his church and we'd love to have him, have them be a part with us as well. For Jesus welcomes all, all who will come to him. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Father, it's good to be in your house every Sunday, but we're especially glad to be able to be here today on this the last Sunday in the month of June. Next Sunday we are going to uh, celebrate another national holiday on the 4th of July. We are going to be in Bible school this afternoon and this week. We have so many opportunities to bear witness and to share and to point out the Savior to others. May we accept the challenge to be faithful. May we seek to do our best in pointing out the Savior who has saved us so that they might know him as well. We pray in the wonderful and matchless and marvelous name of our Lord himself, even Jesus. Amen. Amen. We continue by singing a hymn. We sing it quite often, really. And I don't know if I get tired of doing it, but I don't guess I do because the message is always there in a beautiful way. And if you're a Christian, then it speaks your testimony. I've decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back on my part. And so if that be your testimony, then sing it with enthusiasm. And if you've never done that, then do something about it today as you say yes to him. May we stand and may we sing it together, please.
the last line says it all. No turning back. We keep going. Accept the invitation to join us this afternoon. At 5, we'll eat, I believe, at 5.30. Is that correct? Am I right? <coughs> so join us and be a part of that, and then especially on Monday and Tuesday evening. And if you have kids in the neighborhood who may not be involved in Bible school, then offer to bring them or let their parents know that the effort here, and you'll be blessed for doing so. Thank you again for your presence. Remember the opportunity this afternoon and on Monday and Tuesday evening. And join us now as we pray together. Father, it's been good to have been in your house today. Thank you for the warm and gracious music, for the witness and the faithfulness of your people, and for the truth from your word. May, as we go on our way, do so in faith to reach out and to point others to the captain, in whose name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.